Greetings. I am Dr. H. Gopi, Professor, Department of Veterinary Medicine, Kebri Dihar University, Ethiopia. And I have, I have been the former professor, Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Sciences University, Chennai. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to share my knowledge on strategies to reduce environmental pollution from animal manure. In this two-day symposium on this National Pollution Control Day, organized by School of Life Sciences and CIIC BS Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. I thank the organizer, Dr. S. Amalata, Professor and Dean, School of Life Sciences, and the coordinators, S. Ranjani, Dr. Farida Begum, and Dr. C. Simon Durai Raj to have given this opportunity. The strategies, the strategies to reduce environmental pollution from animal malnutrition. As you all know that the animal manure, the livestock manure is responsible for emission of methane and nitrous oxide to the environment. So if the livestock industry have to be sustainable, then we should see that the emission is reduced and we have to adopt the ways and means to reduce the emission of methane and the nitrous oxide to the environment. When you say about livestock manure, we all know that's a very valuable resource of fertilizers for cultivations of crops. But as I told you earlier, because of the emission of methane and nitrous oxide, it is a potential threat to the environment. So one of the most possible ways to control the emission of this methane and nitrous oxide, which forms the greenhouse gas, is to feed the animal so that in a way in which that it can reduce the emission of these gases through manure. As you all know that manure is a very good fertilizer and a soil conditioner. We can also reduce the emissions by following housing management systems which can cause less pollution and will have more economic value. Next slide, please. An assessment has been done in United States to find out how much of manure is received by each species. In the picture, you can see the total acreage that is in 1000 acre units, the beef cattle 2515, the dairy cow 6,413, which, uh, which shares the major animal manure. The swine 1,345, poultry 896, and others 270. The most important aspect is the flow of nitrogen that is associated with animal production. The most important potential impacts that is seen is that these gases affects the groundwater and air quality. You can see from animal manure, ammonia and nitrous acid is released to the atmospheric air. And also we can see that there is denitrification and leaching of these 
gases to the groundwater. But of course, there is a cycle. From soil organic matter, you can see the ammonium and then back to nitrate and then it is going back to the plant. So, and from atmospheric nitrogen also is fixed to the soil and that is consumed by the animals. So, this is a cycle in which we see the flow of nitrogen. With my, I, has, I have been associated in working in farm, of course, heading the farm for nearly 15 years. The farm was earlier known as the Livestock Research Station Katapakam and presently known as the Postgraduate Research Institute in Animal Sciences, Potteri. It is located in Potteri, opposite to the Ashwaram University. In the farm, we have 200 cattle, about 250 of sheep and 250 of goats and nearly 1000 numbers of swine or pigs. We have 100 ostriches, we have 250 rabbits and we are having ducks, 1000 ducks. So it has completely all the species of livestock. So in, in an effort to reduce the pollution from manure. We have collected all the waste from the different about 16 animal piggery sheds are available. The sheds housing pigs, nearly 16 sheds housing pigs have been connected and all the waste is collected in a tank. And this tank is, pro is further treated by wastewater treatment plant. And the wastewater is used for production of RT pasture. You can see in the picture the wastewater treatment plant and RT pasture with recycled water. And of course the solid waste, the sludge is used for as a manure. This has been practically adopted in the farm. And also the manure from the cattle section has been used for production of biogas. This biogas is being continuously used in the canteen for cooking. So this biogas can also be used for semi generated for the diesel plus biogas operation of the diesel generators and also for production of light in households. So there has been several schemes in India for propagation of this biogas production. I also should share my experience. When I worked in Velour, if I am correct, the Maharani ice cream parlors are available and these people are having huge biogas production for heating the milk that is produced from the animals before making ice cream and selling in parlors. So, and also I have seen in many villages that this biogas has been put into a useful use. So by this way, we can control the emission of methane and nitrous oxides. And also, the manure from the cattle section has been used for production of biogas. This biogas is being continuously used in the canteen for cooking. So this biogas can also be used for semi generate for the diesel plus biogas operation of the diesel generators and also for production of light in households. So there has been several schemes in India for propagation of this biogas production. 
I also should share my experience. When I worked in Velour, if I am correct, the Maharani ice cream parlors are available. And these people are having huge biogas production for heating the milk that is produced from the animals before making ice cream and selling in parlors. So, and also I have seen in many villages that this biogas has been put into a useful use. So by this way, we can control the emission of methane and nitrous oxides. And the next important thing that we were doing in the earlier days was also making the dried version of this cow dung and, and uh, the animal waste. And uh, as far as my knowledge goes, we used to collect the poultry manure from the poultry research station in our university and use it for use it as a livestock, I mean a manure for cultivation of crops. Another option to reduce these gases is to vermicompost it. We were doing this vermicompost in our farm and we were selling at the rate of 5 rupees per kg. We also produced panchakavya and as you all know that the manure is also used as fuel. You can produce holy ash, soaps, toothpaste, shaving creams, sunscreens, face washes, teas, incense sticks, biofertilizers. And to my to my I was really astonished rather to see all these products available in Amazon, India Mart and Flipkart. So we find that there are several ways to mitigate the harmful effects of livestock manure. But let us come to the potential pollutants. Where from are we getting this pollutants? You know that livestock industry has two or three main areas. One is the dairy industries, meat industry, and of course the poultry industry. So these are the food processing industry. You get the waste material in from these industries also, but it's, we have to understand that it is mandatory to have a dairy effluent treatment plant in all these industries. Let it be slaughterhouses or milling industry. The dairy effluent treatment plant is a must. And in, in these effluent plants, it, we have to be necessarily monitor the BOD, the biological oxygen demand. And as you all know, it is in our traditional livestock farming, the manure was used as a fertilizer. And of course, this manure was also used for production of fuel. But in case of this intensified livestock farming, we find that a lot of uh, pollution takes place from the feed that we give to the animals to increase the growth as well as improve production. Now let us see what are all the issues that is surrounded us, that is surrounding us. The first one is water quality, soil degradation, air pollution, rural urban interface, nitrate leaching, excessive contribution of some minerals, high concentration of copper sulphate in case of uh, swine management, climate change which is the, uh, the greater concern and you know every now and then 
the complete global leaders meet to mitigate and reduce the destruction to the environment energy inefficiency and also we are shifting from to the non conventional energies so that the environment is saved sometimes we lack alternative energy sources that minimize pollution and as i told you the emission of methane and greenhouse uh, nitrous oxide in in uh, various uh, industries leads to the accumulation of greenhouse gas acid rain depletion of stratospheric ozone layer now as you know that because of your continuous effect the depletion of ozone layer we are able to control it to the considerable level and as i know to my knowledge in 2065 the depletion or the hole that we are talking about ozone layer will be completely covered because of the continuous effort and the montreal 1987 agreement then the rural urban interface i have already told loss of genetic diversity and narrowing of genetic basis for agriculture now what are the solutions how to reduce these environmental pollution the best way is to manage it with nutritional management and treating the manure that is produced in livestock farms and of course the storage of manure and distributions and one way is to modify the livestock housing systems now what are the principles of manure management see the principles of manure management have to be followed if you want an environmentally sustainable animal husbandry and as you all know that there should be regulations and there are regulations on pollutants from manure and there are several options for manure management now what is this environmentally sustainable animal industry what is the definition see whenever you are maintaining the livestock farms it should be economically viable and whatever livestock you are maintaining we all know that it is the food for human beings and this food should be safe and nutritious and also we should strive hard for conserving and enhancing neutral resources and providing a very good environment for the future generations so this is the main principles that are required whenever you are having an animal husbandry for it to sustain environmentally as i told you earlier also that there are some environmental issues now what are the environmental issues issues we talk about the air quality so you always see that in most of the capital cities or the metropolitan cities the air quality is displaced in the vital points because the air quality is disturbed, disturbed by so many reasons and as you all know that even uh, 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 in delhi it was recently said due to smog the air quality is depleted and the climate change is of, often seen often seen with disasters like uh, fire the forest fires and we can see floods and and presidential rains and presidential droughts so because of depletion they it was once told that because of the depletion in the ozone layer the antarctica uh, there was depletion in the, the climate uh, change due to a difference in antarctica the energy inefficiency the lack of alternative energy sources that minimize pollution and depletion of stratospheric ozone layer which i said uh, will is been attended to and addressed to so that in 2065 the ozone layer depletion will be completely reduced loss of genetic diversity 
narrowing of genetic basis for agriculture. Now what are the key areas that we have to concentrate? We have to concentrate on environmental pollution by products. Whenever you are making different products in using the livestock, we have to see that the waste is properly treated. And livestock manure, livestock manure, I said it is uh, can be controlled by proper nutrition and proper housing and management. And of course, management of waste. When I talk about management of waste, I fondly remember my friend and my boss, Dr. V. Ramesh Sharuna Kumar, who was the director of the Central Animal Production Studies, Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Sciences University who has done or contributed a lot on waste management in livestock industry. Of course, he's no more, but all his efforts in these areas cannot be forgotten. There are different regulations on the pollutants from manure. Various countries regulate livestock waste disposal with various norms. In UK, there is a Code of Good Agricultural Practice for Protection of Water, Code of Good Agricultural Practice for Protection of Air. And it has been assessed that 250 kg per hectare of total nitrogen is applied as organic manure per year. And there has been regulations that only so many number of animals can be, paint, can be maintained for producing manure erector of land dairy cows 2 young stock 4 pigs 16 south with sows with piglets 5 turkeys and ducks 100 layings and laying hens 133 young hens 2 now what are the options of manure management you find there is nutritional management by which you can reduce the emission of these gases by Selecting proper feeds. The fertilizers, the manure can be used for fertilizers where the plant absorbs all the nitrogen and gives in return gives us food for us. So what happens when you apply as a fertilizer? You see that there are effects on soil and environment. But we should be strict in complying with the code that has been given by each country. Now, what are the treatment options in manure? How are you going to treat this manure? The manure can be composed. Now, what are the different types of composting? You have aerobic composting, anaerobic composting, vermicomposting. Now, I told you in the water treatment plant, there is activated sludge process. There are sequencing batch reactor reverse osmosis. So these uh, methods are used for separating the solid from the liquid. And also you can produce a lot of value added product from the livestock waste which I have already mentioned in my earlier slides and use of biofilter. And some of the ways in which uh, we are trying to mitigate this uh, emission of gases is using the animal feed as uh, the waste as animal feed. The waste from animal animal is used as animal feed. As you all know, poultry litter is used as cattle feed. And also we are producing biomass, maybe single cell proteins like that from manure fermentation as animal feed. You can produce biomass from aerobic fermentation and you can produce biomass from anaerobic fermentation. And one, one of the most important aspect is producing fuel from manure. Actually, uh, I told you earlier, Dr. V. Ramesh Sharan Kumar and his student, Dr. Jane ha John Hybraman, have developed production of uh, diesel from poultry litter, which has been patented. What about the nutritional management? The nutritional management is to reduce the amount of nutrients in the manure. One of the most important way by which you can reduce these emissions is by avoiding overfeeding 
you reduce excretion of undigested components more important because you should know which are the components is digested by each species of animals and you have to use it accordingly and also use of enzyme phytase and use of synthetic amino acids and enzymes when you use manure as fertilizers it is by disposing the waste or use as a fertilizer i have earlier told that manure is a very good fertilizer as well as the soil conditioner and every government or every country has a proper way in which the excess amount of manure is to be disposed so we have to follow those norms while disposing the excess amount of manure now let us see what are the effects of manure on soil and environment the major aspect is if you each crop requires a specific requirement of nitrogen protein and potassium so if you are able to give the optimum amount required for that particular crop then the excess excess nitrogen is not felt in the soil so optimum level of manure is to be given for each specific crop and also we have to comply with the code in spreading of manure because there should not be pollution due to weather due to the topography soil conditions and rate of application i told you because soil conditions weather is again you cannot be applying uh, manure during rainy days where it will run off and it will go to the soil and also it depends on the topography of the place in which you are applying the manure more important aspect is time i told you the seasons the rate the necessity for adequate storage of manure the types and size of storage facilities depends on the amount of daily waste generated the need for the extra water and the storage time so whether you are going to whether the manure is produced at what time and at what time are you going to use this manure for fertilizer as a fertilizer so all this is required for determining the storage facility of manure the most important aspect as i told you is the manure application rates where the nutrient requirements of crop gone is required each crop has its own requirements of nutrients and also we should know what is the nutrient content of the manure and unless and until we know the nutrient content of manure we cannot determine what is the nutrient uh, what how much of uh, manure is to be spread for a particular crop we should be aware of soil nutrient status also suppose if a soil is very rich in a particular nutrient then it is of no use in uh, applying manure of that particular nutrient what are the treatment options the treatment options depends on the species of animal the manure handling system and the purpose of treatment it is also important why we are treating the waste why should we treat the waste we all know that once you treat the waste and if you convert it into simpler forms of the compounds it is easier for transport the animal is the manure will be always wet and if it is made dry and compact it is easy for transport say vermi composting is one way of uh, uh, composting and making it treating the uh, it, treating the manure of course in vermi compost you know that we use earthworms and this earthworms works on the manure for 10 days and it makes it into simpler or smaller compounds which is easily transfer uh, it is transportable and also we are marketing this particular waste say 5 rupees per kg and most of the urban dwellers they get this vermi compost for developing their own kitchen garden and this vermi composting will reduce the manure odor and the treatment of waste will reduce the manure odor otherwise which is very offensive 
Now what are the treatment options? You can remove the solids with separator. You can remove the solids using polymer. And you can precipitate phosphorus. And you can use sequencing batch reactor. In Europe, they use controlled composting and biogas production. Also, also I told that uh, we were uh, producing biogas from the cattle manure and we were recycling the wastewater from piggery sheds. One of the methods by which you can reduce this green out, greenhouse gas emission is by composting. I already told you the different ways. You can use the microscopic bacteria, fungi and earthworm for composting. What does it do in composting is that it converts the complex organic matter to humus like simpler material. And in the process, it emits carbon dioxide, water and humus. Now, what are the objectives of this composting? You can always stabilize the putrescible, otherwise putrescible organic matter. You can stabilize the otherwise putrescible organic matter. You can destroy the pathogens and weed seeds. It is the best method for conservation of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Now, what else that is contribute, contributed by this composting? It makes the manure dry. It makes it into a uniform product, which is free from objectionable and harmful components. The odors, the mal odors, otherwise offensive odors are reduced during storage and spreading. There has been a work done by, uh, again, once again, I have to mention Dr. Visha Ramesh Sharan Kumar and his team. In composting, slaughter waste combined with kyre pit waste, slaughter waste with the kyre pit waste, to make it hygienically and environmentally safe method of disposal of broiler slaughterhouse waste. So they have combined this slaughtered horse with, with coir pith to make it hygienic and environmental safe. Now one of the method of composting is aerobic composting. The temperatures that are seen in aerobic composting is 55 to 70 degrees centigrade. And in this aerobic composting, the water creation is very, very much limited. Now there are factors which affect the rate of aerobic composting, the moisture content of the manure, the bulking agent, the aeration available of oxygen, the nutrient balance, pH and temperature. And next is the anaerobic composting where the temperature is around 55 degrees centigrade. But these uh, byproducts create offensive septic odors. I told you we had uh, vermicomposting done in our farm, the postgraduate research institute in animal sciences, Potteri, where and many of the farms in uh, or the outreach centers of Tamil Nadu Veterinary Animal Sciences University, they were demonstrating the vermicomposting, and most of the colleges, uh, uh, natural sciences colleges. We are training people on this vermicomposting, which is a variation of aerobic composting. I told you the earthworms are added to the manure and in the process there is rapid decomposition of organic materials. And after 10 days you remove the earthworm or you can change it to the next uh, batch, of, uh, batch of manure. The material is drought dried, filtered, packaged and marketed. You can, you know, because of the uh, the conversion into simpler pro, simpler materials, uh, the weight and volume is reduced to 50%. Nitrogen is lost due to volatilization, composting in windrows and bins, and there is also aerated bins with provision of fertilizer. 
another system is deep litter system where the animals is kept in 40 to 70 centimeter sawdust wood shavings are finely chopped straw this is usually followed when you have rabbits on poultry when you have rabbits on poultry this system deep litter system is very much followed even in goats it was tried so in which and deep litter aerobic fermentation takes place this uh, this uh, uh, deep litter is normally changed within 15 days or one month or sometimes in three months so this completely taken and uh, you can see in the deep litter that feces and uh, urine are fermented and uh, we have to change now and then because there is a lot of heat generated and uh, the bedding temperature is increased to 30 to 40 degrees centigrade and a lot of water is evaporated from excreta this uh, deep litter system stimulates the process microbial products on a regular basis you can see liver energy liberated from the excreta the bedding material to be mixed with incorporation of oxygen and for homogenization so what are the important factors that is required in this deep litter system is ventilation and mixing Whenever there is high humid uh, weathers, probably this deep litter system will not be very good because if the uh, if the stocking density of the animals are more than the space that is required to keep them, then definitely there is uh, ammonical odors are uh, produced which will have detrimental effect on the animals. Activated sludge process. I told you this is the water treatment plant that uh, we were having in our farm. The process in which wastewater containing biodegradable compounds is brought into contact in a fluidized mixed culture of microorganisms in an anaerobic environment. Now, what happens? What is the result? It is the biological purification. You can see the coagulation and flocculation of small particulate matter oxidation of carbonic matter and also there is further oxidation of ammonia nitrogen to nitrate and you should see that the BOD nitrogen phosphorus ratio should be approximately 100, 100 is to 5 is to 1 for good organic removal. Now what are the factors that influence the process? Excessive levels of certain metals and host of other pollutants, temperature and pH, the pH should be between 7 to 8. If it is very cold, then it will reduce the BOD removal efficiency. Fermentation in aeration causes biomass to be formed. This biomass is separated in a settling tank. And the treatment and disposal cost of this stretch are high because of low solid content concentration. Now, how to improve this low solid concentration is by gravity thickening, where the dry matter of the sludge is made into 4%. There are centrifuges, vacuum filters, or band presses, which will improve the dry matter content of the sludge to 10 to 40%. If you are able to condition the sludge with the prior treatment of chemicals such as lime, iron salts, and poly, uh, polyelectrolyze, it also can be done. If you use a filter press, then the dry matter is increased up to 35 to 50 percent and finally if you heat dry it you may if the dry matter content is increased to 50 percent the next process is sequencing batch reactor treatment it's a single vessel wherein you can have phases of aerobic and anaerobic conditions and also alternative to continu conventional continuous flow activated sludge treatment this is a this has been tried that is a BOD reduction there is suspended solid removals, nitrification, denitrification, chemical precipitation and you find that two cycles that is the aerobic and anaerobic states in the cyclic fashion and this is the best method for treatment of dilute wastewater. The reverse osmosis is also fine you know in the most this reverse osmosis is uh, mostly practiced in uh, removing the salinity in, from seawater. So this is the most important aspect of reverse osmosis where you can separate the liquid and the more smaller particles, the solids. It's, it's a more most uh, advantageous method because it is easy to operate and maintain and also it saves the storage space. 
But what is the disadvantage is uh, it's a fairly complex system where you use a lot of membranes. You have a lot of membranes to remove a particular type or a particular weight of a particular element or compound. So reverse osmosis is a very complex system. So what are the value ordered products that you can think of? I have showed you a list of value ordered products that in my initial slide, like soap, seep, uh, like soaps and uh, ash and the fuel and other different types of value added product from waste. This one aspect has been done by, again by my friend Dr. Ramesh Kumar and his team, utilization of broiler slaughter waste by dry rendering process produced render, rendered chicken oil so what this what is the use of this rendered chicken oil this rendered chicken chicken oil is used for biodiesel production and also they have used a carcass meal they have produced a carcass meal which is, will be a feed ingredient ingredient for pets and fishes so they have found out from uh, they, they have utilized the broiler slaughter waste in two two ways. One is the biodiesel production, and other one is the carcass meal. So the RC RCO B20 can reduce the import of crude oil, and also it can substantially reduce engine emissions as proved by significantly lower smoke levels, thus mitigating climate changes. So this was the finding of the research by Dr. Viramesh Kumar and his. And use a biofilter. In case of biofilter, you see that the odor is controlled. Most of the odor problems is solved by biofilter. It has a lot of economic advantage over the air pollution control technologies. And it is done by using two mechanisms, the absorption, absorption mechanism and also biooxidation mechanism. The most important aspect of animal waste or, or uh, the use of the animal waste is using it as a feed for livestock. The poultry litter is used as for cattle field in US. The broiler litter is used as a feed in US, which is an high level of which has a high level of fiber and NPN, non-proteinous non uh, nitrogen substances. It has the highest nutritive content of any animal manure. It has a crude protein up to 38%. The cost is very low. It is very palatable when it is mixed with other ingredients. In case of Canada, the layer litter is used, which has a moisture content of 51%. And it can be substituted up to 20% in the feed of cattle. But this should not be fed for dairy cows and replacement efforts. Now, what is the disadvantage? They have a lot of inclusion of foreign material, let it be uh, any sort of screw or nails or clips or maybe pins or whatever. A uh, lot of foreign materials. So we have to be very careful when you are using this poultry as a uh, cattle field. It has a very high ash content. And also, you will find that there is a lot of mixing of soil with the feed so in this uh, uh, this uh, uh, mixing of soil will influence the high hash content and so what are the processing methods of litter to eliminate pathogens you can deep stack it for 20 days you can add uh, additives like urea and acid you can mix the litter with other ingredients and ensaline to increase acid production and saline to increase acid production and of course, we can mechanically dry it or pellet it. Now, what are the biomass from manual manure fermentation from animal feed? Whenever you ferment, the biomass is produced. The animal waste are very high in complex population of wild microorganisms. So this sludge is used as animal feed, which is rich in proteins and vitamins. And also there is presence of heavy metals, chlorinated organics and pesticides which are detrimental to the uh, animal. 
but the pathogenic microorganisms are completely destroyed by you can see that there are two it was known that there are two stage or continuous aerobic process and also woven dried products and from anaerobic fermentation you can see that uh, conversion of feedlot to manure filtrate to protein feed supplements for ruminants and yield was maximum during ph when the ph was 7 and the temperature was 43 degrees centigrade and the fermentable carbohydrates were 3.5 to 10 percent this biomass was rich in crude protein the con the residue consisted of microbial cells whenever you ferment the cattle manure for three days you see there is an increase in protein from 16.99 percent to 43.26 percent and also there is a net increase of amino acids you can in this way you see that the conversion of animal waste to the methane and protein concentrate by thermophilic anaerobic fermentation and centrifugation so this is one of the method by which you can convert the animal waste to methane and protein what are the nutritional management that has to be followed to reduce pollution from manure this is the most important or the beginning point of uh, management to reduce pollution we have to reduce the excretion of nutrient we have to add feed additive to control odor and also reduce excretion of minerals now what are the principles that can be followed which will have an impact on animal manure and environment you have to use only the superior stock why you should use the superior stock if you use the superior stock it will consume uh, the lot of uh, the nutrients and this nutrient will be utilized for production purposes and not wasted in the manure so that is the ultimate uh, advantage of using a superior stock judicious formulation of dietary regime because your right regime in such a way that uh, excess should not uh, be going as waste in the animal manure and the, the feeds that you are using should be highly digestible because the undigested components in the manure will result in uh, polluting the environment the healthy animals will be able to accumulate or assimilate all the nutrients and leaving none in the excreta and also you can use approved growth promoters like in case of us they use the bovine somatotropin maximum inclusion of amino acids the use of supplemental enzymes and phased feeding of animals that is you have to feed according to the growth of the animals if it is young whatever the protein required has to be fed if it is grower the regular the need the protein exact protein requirement for grower should be fixed and fed and if it is an adult it should be fed accordingly if it is a lactating animal it has to be fed accordingly if it is a pregnant animal it has to be fed accordingly so in this way uh, you can uh, by way of this nutrition management you can reduce the pollution from manure now i told you in the early slide itself you have to maxim you have to adopt uh, the ways and means to reduce the output of manure so reduction of manure output how do you reduce the manure output you can use the enzyme supplementation you can use supplemental enzymes for reduction of dry matter in digest in digester and we can this will also have a marked impact on excreta volume and composition so it is most important that the nitrogen used in livestock form is judiciously done the amino acid supplementation and protein restriction in pigs 20% nitrogen is excreted in feces and 50% in urine the fecal nitrogen exists in three forms undigested nitrate protein microbial protein endogenous protein and this 80% of the fecal nitrogen in the form of is seen in the form of bacterial protein the nitrogen reduction can be obtained by provision of amino acids without excess increase the protein digestibility and reduce endogenous nitrogenous nitrogen excretion the enzymes use of enzymes and enhances amino acid digestion 
you can use carbohydrates and proteases the use of carbohydrates will result in result in increased nitrogen retention the multi enzyme preparation will increase nitrogen retention the most important aspect is here. it will improve the availability of amino acid and also presence of gluconase reduce the level of ammonia release by 80% now what about proteases enzyme proteases will increase the digestibility and will have a slight positive effect on utilization of nitrogen neutral protease added to is uh, is added to bring about the solubilization of feathers i told you growth promoters the growth promoters are nothing but adding up antibiotics beta agonists and bst see this antibiotics is normally used in uh, poultry and also bst is used for growth uh, uh, for wherever there is uh, uh, impact on growth maybe in beef or in dairy so you increase the ability of animal to utilize the available dietary protein reduction of excretion of total nitrogen and you see in the bst treated cows the nitrogen excretion per liter of milk is reduced by 15% now what are the other things that you can adopt you can adopt fiber sources trypsin inhibitors tannins and lectins so we have to be very careful with this because these are anti nutritional factors you increase the endogenous nitrogen secretion decrease protein utilization and by usage of a particular or avoiding the use of particular feed stuff you can reduce pollution from, through manure and you can certain feed treatments and enzyme supplementation will destroy the bad effects the odor control ammonia release from owner is to be controlled ammonia release from manure can be limited by using additives by drying and acidic acidic conditions zeolite improves the litter condition and environment of barn so these are the references that I have looked into for formulating this particular talk thank you so much once again i thank the organizer hemlata madam and his team for giving me a wonderful uh, opportunity for sharing my thoughts thank you one and all